presented by DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. The most exciting car today is now delighting the far highway. It's the lovely, it's the dynamic, it's DeSoto. And here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And if they're lucky, they may even get a crack at $10,000. If any of our couples say the secret word, the duck will drop down and pay him an extra $100. The word tonight is head. Okay, Doug, beat it. All right, George, who's first for DeSoto? Jan Dietrich and uh, John Rose are all set to talk to you, Groucho. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, say the secret word, and you each win an extra $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Jan Dietrich and John Rose, eh? John Rose, that's a simple declarative, isn't it? I believe so, Groucho, but uh, the name is Reese, R-O-E-S-E, -E, Johnny Reese. Johnny Reese, when you, you spell it, R-O-S-E? R-O-E-S-E. R-O-E-S-E. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Jan? You're a mighty, mighty pretty girl, and I have a question to ask you. Are you married? No, I'm not, Groucho. How old are you, Jan? I'm 29. Were you named after January? No, it's, uh, my full name is Janet. Oh. Jan is a nickname. Oh, I see. Do you have a job, uh, Jan? Yes, I'm a commercial airplane pilot. Pilot? You look more like a hostess, uh, with a mostess. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you work for, Jan? I'm head of the flight department for the Air Oasis Company at Long Beach Airport. Uh, they are the largest distributor in the world for Cessna aircraft, and Cessna is the largest light plane manufacturer in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's enough of that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you get for one of these, uh, these uh, planes? Uh, they range from about $9,000 to about $56,000. $56,000 for yes, a single-seater? No, that's for the twin-engine five-place Cessna 310. Oh. It's a beautiful airplane. Well, I should think so. If I paid $56,000 for an airplane, it would have so many mortgages on it, I couldn't get it off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Jan? I was born in San Francisco, and I went to the University of California. Oh, San Francisco. Did you know Mr. Fenneman? Did you know that Mr. Fenneman's yes. from San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's very well known up there. That's why he had to come down here. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, uh... A rose graduate. You're John. You're John. <laughs> <laughs> are you related to Billy Rose? Oh, no, Gretchen. It's still Reese. <laughs> no. Uh, related to roses are red, violets are blue, Horse, sugar. Huh? Horses, Nick, do you? <laughs> well, you're certainly getting jokes from an unexpected quarter here. Huh? Horses, Nick, do you, huh? Uh, where do you live, John? Uh, Gretchen, for the past 10 years, I've been living in Azusa, California. Azusa? I thought that was a cracker. <laughs> what made you decide to live in Azusa as opposed to Paris or London? Well, Gretchen, uh... <laughs> logical question. <laughs> why, did, why did you live there? You just love the town? Is that it? Well, Gretchen, when uh, Jack Benny used to uh, do a lot of gags about Azusa on his program, I heard yeah. so many of them, I decided to go out there and look around, and, and I found a lot. I built an adobe house on it, and that's where I live. Oh. <laughs> You're lucky Benny didn't mention Outer Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? Uh? Yes, Gretchen. Uh, How long have you been married? Uh, six months. Is this your first time out? Uh, yes, Groucho, it is. Mm. Where'd you go on your honeymoon? Did you go to Cucamonga? Uh, no, we spent uh, three days at the Convention of the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you fly around there much? Or? <laughs> no, Groucho, I, I was a pretty busy man up there, and I didn't have much time to see my wife at all. I, oh. Hope she enjoyed herself. I think she did. <laughs> well, could a moose go there or an elk? Or yes, if he was an eagle, too. Oh. Well, why did you go to an eagle's convention on your honeymoon? Well, because I'm an eagle. <laughs> well, where would you have gone if you were an elk? I'd gone to an elk's convention. Oh. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd hang over a fireplace. <laughs> Well, let's get back to your planes, uh, Janet. Uh, how much did you say they cost? 
Uh, they run from about $9,000 to $56,000. Well, I don't care how they run. The question is, will they fly? <laughs> oh, they'll fly. <laughs> What makes a plane stay up in the air? I never could figure it out. The lift from the air holds the, the wing up. Air is very dense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that last thing? The air is what? <laughs> dense. Well, I'd love to. Do you care to waltz or rumble? <laughs> well, I don't understand about air being dense. How, how dense is the air? Is it as dense as the sucker who forks over $56,000? <laughs> Well, a bathtub full of air weighs about two pounds. I've never flown in one of those. <laughs> I was sucked down the drain once. But... <laughs> I, 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 don't, I didn't know that, that a bathtub full of air weighed... Uh... You know, when I take a bath, I always put water in it. <laughs> do you understand what she's saying, Mr. Reese? Yes, I do, got you. You do. Well, would you explain it to me? I don't... Well, the wing goes over the lift. I mean, the air goes over the lift of the wing, over the top, and creates a vacuum underneath that helps lift the plane, and there's also air underneath which helps push it up. Well, as an eagle, I guess you'd know a lot about flying. <laughs> <laughs> do you do any, uh, have you ever done any flying, uh, Johnny? Uh, yes, got you a little. I had about 45 minutes of a stick, and I was also a stuntman on Old Jenny. Really? Did you know Old Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny airplane got you. I've done many a stunt with old Jenny. <laughs> we had a high old time together. Well, I'd like to continue talking to you about the Eagles and old Jenny, but it's time for you to win some money. So let's pay your bet your life. Uh, uh, you selected uh, food and cooking, right? If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What food is more widely grown and used than any other food? Come on, kids. Wheat? I think it's potato. One answer. Wheat? No. It it's, mm. no. it's rice. Oh. oh. Well, you're off to a flying start. You got one wrong. You get one more wrong, and you're out. You can't get a better deal than that any place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's see what you can do with it. What kind of seeds are used in rye bread? One answer now. Talk it over. A caraway seed? That's right. Caraway back to old Virginia. You're on the right track now. Three more right, you'll have $1,000. What is a ragu? R-A-G-O-U-T. It's kind of a stew. It's kind of a stew. Are you referring to Mr. Fenneman, or is this the answer? That's right. A ragu is a stew. You're halfway to $1,000. All right. What are Jonathan's, Gravenstein's, or Gravenstein's, and Northern Spies? Apples. Hopples, that's right. Hopples. One more right and you'll have a thousand dollars. Did you know that a Gravenstein a, a day will keep the doctor away? <laughs> All right, how many standard cups of granulated sugar are in one pound? How many cups? Have you never been in your cups, Mr. Reese? Um, what's this size package? <laughs> yeah, Come on, kids. Time um, is but, fleeting. Um, no, it's quite a number. Of How many standard cups, cups of granulated nine. sugar are in one pound? Two ounces of cup. Two cups. Take a guess. Two cups. Two cups is right. And How easy it was? Four in a row right, so you win $1,000. There you are. You see <laughs> You won $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You might even get a crack at $10,000. So go over there and think it over. No matter what your decision is, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, guys. Out of it. Here's the beautiful motion picture star, Jean Craig. Hello. I'd like to show you something I'm very proud of. This is my new DeSoto. Isn't it beautiful? It's long and lovely and low. Almost a foot lower than I am, and I'm only five feet five. I think its styling is outstanding, and these new fins are really striking. And what's more, my DeSoto is fun to drive, even in heavy traffic. It's so easy to handle. DeSoto's full-time power steering is the best I've ever tried. 
course, push-button driving is a wonderful improvement. It's so simple. The way my DeSoto rides, you just won't believe it until you try it. As you may have gathered, I'm very pleased with my new DeSoto. I paid a lot more for cars, but this new DeSoto is the most exciting car I've ever had. It's the most exciting car in the world today. The 1957 DeSoto. George, who's next for DeSoto? Groucho, Mrs. Uh, Nina Morgan and Mr. Nicky Stewart are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Now, let's see, Nina or Nina? Nina. What is your hometown, Nina? Napoli. Napoli? It's Italy. Oh, you're from Italy, huh? Yes. How long have you been over here? Ten years. Ten years? What mm -hmm. was your reason for coming to this country? I assume you had a reason, huh? I sure have. I had, I met a soldier. I met him in a dance hall. In Italy? Yes. I thought he went over there to fight. <laughs> I guess he did, he fought. He was fighting in a dance hall? No, 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 he was fight after the war was over. Oh, he mm -hmm. went right from the war to a dance hall? Yes. Oh, well, no. <laughs> he didn't fool around, this guy. Did he? he sure did. <laughs> Just dropped his musket? <laughs> We've had war brides on our show in the past, you know, and often they tell us that they had trouble getting into this country. Did you Well, not trouble? me. I was one of the 500 girls they came over on a, on a boat. 500 girls? Yes. War uh -huh. brides? Well, all were brides. And their husbands were on the boat, too? No, sir, but we should have a good time. <laughs> 500 young brides all alone? All alone. That crew must have worked for nothing. <laughs> I'll bet that's the only ship that ever ran out of gas six times in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> well, how'd you like this trip? Was it exciting? It was really exciting, but it's not as exciting as um, the last trip I made. I was on You made another trip on yes. the boat? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was on Andrea Dory, you know, the you ship is sunk. On the Andrea Dory? Mm -hmm. And it was sunk. Oh, yeah. It sunk. I, I know just how you felt. I was in the stock market when it sank in 20... <laughs> Well, that's very interesting. You're a survivor of the Andrea Dory. You were very lucky. I what was. What did you do when this disaster struck? Well, I was sleeping downstairs, and uh, when I heard you mean the under the boat, no, in bed. Oh. And uh, when I heard the wreck, and I run upstairs with my pajama and with, the, I have a curl in my head. You had what? Curl in my head. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, Anthony Eden. <laughs> you better cheat it. The audience is full of Egyptians here tonight. <laughs> well, you said the secret word, which is uh, curl on my head, so you get $50, and uh, you get $50. Thank you. See how nice it is? It sure is. Now then, tell us what happened. Well, you I... You curling your hair? When I had, you... Yes, I had my curl on my head, and I had just pajama. When I went upstairs, everybody said, outside, outside, so I went too. And I slide down, then we got in a line and we slide down on a rope. You slid on a rope mm -hmm. off the boat? Wasn't it pretty chilly in the boat with pajamas? Y yes, on? and I was all, I got all wet somehow, I don't know how, but I well, was... Well, it's, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't see how anybody can get wet in the ocean. <laughs> now then, uh, your name is uh, Nina Morgan? <laughs> That's Nina Morgan. Oh, your name is, oh, your name is Nike Stewart, huh? Nikki Stewart. Oh, Nikki Stewart. Nikki Stewart. And you're, well, where are you from, Nick? I'm from the Bronx, New York. From the Bronx? What kind of work do you do, Nick? Well, I'm a personal manager. I represent uh, show people. Oh, personal. Well, I know what that is, but perhaps some of our listeners don't. We have an audience full of Egyptians here tonight. <laughs> Could you tell us what a personal manager does and also explain how is it you manage to stay out of jail? <laughs> well, a personal manager is uh, uh, a man who is supposed to project the talents uh, and the name of a certain personality that may be under contract to him. He looks at us uh, for um, guidance. guidance, and we must always act in a fiduciary manner to I protect our... <laughs> Would you mind giving me that again? I said we must always act <laughs> in a fiduciary manner in order to protect our client. Well, the audience times. knows what that means, but I don't. <laughs> Explaining that to me? Well, uh, you mean fiduciary? Yeah. 
Well, fiduciary uh, is a statement that is printed on all contract, personal contracts, which means that you must at all times... Uh, this is in very small print, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it means that you must be honest with your client and you must not scheme for your own personal gains at any time. Well, how do you make a living? Uh... <laughs> Supposing a personal manager wanted to steal an honest dollar here and there from his client, how, how is that done? Well, as I say, I've never done it, but uh, in well, the give, us an, a, give us a for instance. <laughs> you make me this, sound guilty. No, 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 no. This, I want you to present purely a hypothetical case. All right. Well, in in the uh, grapevine, uh, there are several. You you hear things like this. There are several unorthodox personal managers. Who, what do you uh, mean? They don't wear a hat. <laughs> They do, it belongs to the client. <laughs> but, uh, what, what they do is they, uh, uh, here's how they would do it, as I have heard. Uh, for instance, if I were trying to get one of my clients, like Joe Venuti happens to be one of my clients, uh, ask the owner or the booking agent in charge for dinner and uh, probably spend a few dollars on him, and uh, I would say that I spent uh, $500 on uh, entertainment, uh -huh. and when uh, maybe I only spent fifty dollars, that's see. tabbing. Yeah. And as I say, there are some of these personal managers who are more or less in cahoots, and they do work things out like that. Well, but I've I, never done this. I, I'm never sure you have. No, I'm sure you've never swindled a client. Never, never. But uh, it's pretty obvious you've given it some serious thought. <laughs> Let's say that you were my personal manager, Nick. Just how would you go about giving me a, a, one of those big build-ups? Well, first thing I'd do for you, uh, Groucho, would be get you a brand new audience. <laughs> I, uh, what do I need a new audience for? Well, what's, what's the matter with the one I've got now? Huh? Well, I'd, uh, what I what's would What's the trade-in value on this group? <laughs> well, what I mean by... I ought to get a pretty good trade-in, Nick, because this <laughs> audience has only been driven by a little old lady who lives in Pasadena. <laughs> Well, anyway, what would you do? Well, I would, uh, I would uh, put you on, uh, send you out on tour, first of all, to the largest nightclubs in, uh, in the country. I would project your uh, likeness, your name, and your personality in all high schools, colleges. I would uh, get you a new audience, a, a youthful audience, uh, the new uh, youth the of new today. The new crowd, huh? The new crowd. The hoodlums, huh? <laughs> well, they watch television, too. They you don't want a uh, kind of a conservative group of antiques like we have here. <laughs> what makes you so sure that there are lots of people who don't know me? Well, I, I'll give you a personal uh, uh, example. My name of is that. Legion, Groucho Legion. That's my full name. <laughs> uh, about uh, about well, several months ago, my daughter Tisha, she's only ten years old, and uh, I was sitting in the den, and she came in, and she has a little ra uh, television in her room, and she called me. She says, Daddy, why don't you come on in? She says, you used to be in the business. I want you to watch the brand new comedian. And uh, I went into the room to watch it, and there it was, the Groucho Show. <laughs> so uh, I says, honey, I says, uh, this man is funny, but uh, <laughs> he was a star before I was born. <laughs> Just a moment, Nick, old boy. Uh, <laughs> how old are you? Uh, I'll be 39 tonight. 39. Huh? And you tell your kid I was a big star before you were born? <laughs> I've just decided I'm going to hire you as my manager. <laughs> just so I can fire you 10 seconds later. <laughs> Actually, 10-year-old children love me, Nick. I know they do. And you know why? Because my show goes on right after dinner and they don't have to do their homework. <laughs> How'd you ever get into this saw bracket, just collecting money from talent? Well, I originally started out as a hoofer, what we call in the business a hoofer. I was mean a dancer. Oh. Now, Nina, let's get back to you. What sort of interest do you have aside from keeping house? Well, I, I work in the coffee shop at Bob's Drive-In. I sell big boys. You sell big boys what? That's an incomplete statement. <laughs> what do you boys. sell them, huh? Big boys. You they, sell I big boys coffee? Huh? I bet a lot of people know what it is. What? What, do you know what a big boy is? Uh, well, it can be a, a large youth. Isn't that Lord Blizz? <laughs> that is 
it? It's a large house with a hamburger? Don't call hamburgers. We're not allowed to say that. Oh. They're big boys. Well, that's like on the airlines. You don't, you never say it's rough. No. They have a euphemism uh, that they use. Uh, it's turbulent. <laughs> this is the age of the euphemism, you know. There's no such thing as a, an undertaker. Nobody buries you anymore. You can die now and get buried, and you don't know who did it anymore. <laughs> Turns out to be a, what do they call him now? The uh, Undertaker? Well, they have a fancy name for it now. Well, I can't think of it anymore. Well, is that what you always want to do? Hawk hamburgers? Well, do no, you have I, any other ambitions? Oh, I should have. I um, always have a secret ambition. I want to be a dancer. You want to be a dancer? I always want to. Oh, well, uh, are you a good dancer? Well, well, how would you handle a situation like this, Nick? Here's a girl who wants to be a dancer. Could you, what could you do for her? Well, I'd have to see what what, uh, what she could do in dancing. Well, and you told me you used to be a dancer. Yeah, well, what I... What kind of music? Could you dance with her? I sure could if... Uh, if, if oh, it's girls... called a mortuary. That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> I could dance with her if, uh, if the boys would give me some rhythm music. You mean I... the, mu the musicians? We, we have a loose expression for him, and we call him musicians. Huh? <laughs> what kind of music would you require? Some type of rhythm music. Rock and roll, you mean? Some rock and roll, yeah. That's oh. Can you give him some rock and roll? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you give him some rock and roll, Jack? Oh, no! You two make quite a team. What's your opinion, Nick? I think she's real gone. Yeah, she is. <laughs> no, she's still here, but what's your opinion? <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you, but now let's give you a chance to win some money. You both know how we play You Bet Your Life? Yes. Now, we want one answer between you on all these questions. You selected professions of famous people. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. You ready? What was the famous Nijinsky's profession? You say, do this. Now well, she talks to me in Italian. <laughs> uh, uh, he was a dancer, I believe. Yeah, that's true. He was a dancer. One right, three more, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Now, what was Hippocrates' profession? You remember the Hippocratic <laughs> Oath? <laughs> Hippocrates. <laughs> He was the father of medicine. He was a doctor. Oh, yes. Yeah, right. It's up in every doctor's office. You see that oath up there, the Hippocratic Oath? One wrong now. Don't get another one wrong or you'll be out of the game. <laughs> are you a Hippocrat? Uh, <laughs> or are you a Republican? <laughs> All right. With what profession is the name of Jacques Fath connected? F-A-T-H. J-A-C-Q-U-E-S, capital F-A-T-H. With what profession? An actor, I'll just, I'll just throw No, him. he was a dress designer, very famous. Well, you got two wrong in a row, so you're out of the game. Oh, I'm sorry you missed two in a row, so you're all through. Well, we don't want you to go away empty-handed. I'm going to ask you one question for $100. You ready? What was Dr. Defoe's profession? <laughs> he was a Hippocratic oath. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry you didn't win more, but you won the secret way. That's $100 and 100 for this, so you got $200. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. Sorry you didn't win more. You bet your luck. Now, in just one minute, we'll find out if our first couple, Mrs. Dietrich and Mr. Reese, will risk half their winnings on a chance at $10,000. Now I'd like to show you something important. This is a picture of the most exciting value in cars today. This is it. The 57 DeSoto with a new low price. This year's DeSoto was way ahead of our competitors. And yet DeSoto prices start right above the lowest. It's a big car with big car comfort and big car beauty that our competitors will be imitating two or three years from now. It's low. Lower than any of our competitors. 
but it's got as much or more room inside as any of the cars that are much taller. And plenty of road clearance, too. It's really got power and terrific performance. And that new torsion air ride is so smooth, you'll find it hard to believe. Then there's new triple range push button driving. One or two cars are imitating that now, and others will follow, but this is by far the best. Now, I'm not telling you to run right out and buy a DeSoto on my recommendation, but I believe you'll be a wiser automobile buyer if you'll drive this car. See what it has to offer, then price it. And I think you'll be surprised, because this year DeSoto prices start just above the lowest. Then make your decision. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. George, we're ready to see who's going to get a crack at all this money. What's the story on our first couple? Well, as you know, our last couple didn't qualify, but our first couple did. And they've decided to risk half their earnings on a chance at $10,000, and here they are. Dan Dietrich and John Reese. Yes, Rose. <laughs> Rose, his name is. <laughs> Reese. Are you ready? You decide to go for the big question. Remember, you miss it, you wind up with $500. Are you still going to go for the big money? Mm -hmm. Okay. There are 10 numbers in this wheel. I want you to get together and pick a number. Any number you want from 1 to 10. One of you pick the number and one spin the wheel. Take a number. There's Five. only 10. Five. Five. Give it a 12. Your number was five, and you landed on seven. You ready? You got 15 seconds and one answer. The American soldier is named G.I., or Doughboy. For $2,000, what do the British call their army privates? Talk it over. What is the answer you've decided upon? Tommy's. Tommy is right. Tommy Atkins. Tommy. <laughs> so you win two thousand dollars. Congratulations and thanks for being with us. You bet your life. <laughs> Friends. Go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Next week, Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life will be brought to you by the makers of From Home Permanent. This is my family album. And this is my brother Hoppo. He's always chasing the girls. But no more, now he's a teller the girls about creamy prom. Because prom home permanent is a waving cream. Leaves your hair soft and like a silk. <gasps> Look at the way the waver. She's a bounce back every time. Hey, lady, wouldn't you like your wave behavior like this? You'll get a creamy prom. Right, Hoppo? <laughs> sure to tune in again next week for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Don't miss Chrysler Corporation's big TV show on another network. This is George Fenneman reminding you to listen to You Bet Your Life every Saturday afternoon on NBC Radio. Also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America.